In an ancient land, there lived a semi-barbaric king. He was a man of exuberant fancies, and with an authority so irresistible that he turned those fancies into facts. When he wished something done, it was done. Nothing made him happier than making the crooked straight and crushing down uneven places. And nothing pleased him more than that of the public arena. And even in this his barbaric fancy asserted itself. Should a subject be accused of a crime, public notice was given, and the fate of the accused was decided in the king's arena. In that arena were two doors, exactly the same. The accused chose one door. Behind one was a hungry tiger, the cruelest that could be found, who would spring upon him and tear him to pieces. Behind the other door was a beautiful lady to whom he was immediately married. It mattered not that he might already possess a wife and family or that his affections might be engaged upon an object of his own choosing. Should the accused choose the door with the lady, another door would open, and a priest followed by singers and dancing maidens would advance upon the couple, and the wedding would promptly be solemnized. This was the king's method of administering justice. It was very popular among his people, for the populace never knew whether they were to witness a bloody slaughter or a hilarious wedding. Now this king had a beautiful daughter, with a soul as fervent and imperious as his own. She was loved by him above all humanity, and this tempestuous princess loved a young man of the court. She was well satisfied with her lover, for he was both handsome and brave to a degree unsurpassed in all the kingdom. And she loved him with an ardor both warm and strong. Their secret affair went on for many, many months. Until one day, the king discovered its existence. The king did not hesitate to have the young man cast into prison, and a day was appointed for his trial. Never before had a subject dared to love the daughter of a king. And so the tiger cages of the kingdom were searched for the most savage and relentless of beasts from which the fiercest monster might be found. But also, the most beautiful of maidens throughout the kingdom were surveyed so that the young man might have a fitting bride should fate determine for him a different destiny. Finally, the appointed day arrived from far and near, the people gathered and thronged the great galleries of the arena. The king and his court were in their places, opposite the twin doors. All was ready. The signal was given. A door beneath the royal party opened, and the lover of the princess walked into the arena. Tall, beautiful, fair, his appearance was greeted with a low hum of admiration. As the young man turned to bow to the king, his eyes fixed upon the princess who sat to the right of her father. Had it not been for the moiety of barbarism in her soul, she would not have been there. However, from the moment that the decree had gone forth that her lover should decide his fate in the king's arena, she had thought of nothing, night or day, but this great event. Possessed of more power, influence, and force of character than anyone who had ever before been interested in such a case, she had done what no other person had done. Gold and the power of a woman's will had brought the secret to the princess. Not only did she know in which room stood the lady ready to emerge, blushing and radiant, should her door be opened, but she knew who the lady was. She was one of the fairest and loveliest of the damsels of the court, who had been selected as the reward of the accused youth, should he be proved innocent of the crime of aspiring to one so far above him. And the princess hated her. 
Now and then she had seen them talking together. It was for a moment or two, but much can be said in a brief space. It may have been on most un unimportant topics, but how could she know that? The girl was lovely, but she had dared to raise her eyes to the loved one of the princess, and with all the intensity of her savage blood the princess hated the woman who blushed and trembled behind that silent door. When her lover turned and looked at her, and his eyes met hers as she sat there, paler and whiter than anyone in the vast ocean of faces about her, he saw by the power of quick perception that she knew behind which door crouched the tiger and behind which stood the lady. He understood her nature, and his soul was assured that she would never have rested until she had made plain to herself this thing hidden even from the king. Then it was that his quick and anxious glance asked the question, Which? It was as plain to her as if he shouted it from where he stood. There was not an instant to be lost. The question was asked in a flash. It must be answered in another. Her right arm lay on the cushioned parapet before her. She raised her hand and made a slight quick movement toward the right. No one but her lover saw her. Every eye but his was fixed on the man in the arena. He turned and with firm and rapid step walked across the empty space. Every heart stopped beating, every breath was held, every eye was fixed immovably upon that man. Without the slightest hesitation he went to the door on the right and opened it. Now the point of the story is this. Did the tiger come out of that door, or did the lady? How often in her waking hours and in her dreams had the princess started in wild horror and covered her face with her hands as she thought of her lover, opening the door on the other side of which waited the cruel fangs of the tiger. But how much oftener had she seen him at the other door? How in her grievous reveries had she torn her hair? How her soul had burned in agony? When she had seen him rush to meet that woman with her flushing cheeks and sparkling eyes of triumph. Would it not be better for him to die at once and go to wait for her in the blessed regions of semi-barbaric futurity? And yet, that awful tiger, those shrieks, that blood. Her decision had been indicated in an instant, but had been made after days and nights of anguished deliberation. She had known she would be asked, she had decided what she would answer, and without the slightest hesitation she had moved her hand to the right. The question of her decision is one not to be lightly considered, and it is not for me to presume to set myself up as the one person able to answer it. And so I leave it with all of you. Which came out of the open door, the lady or the tiger? <laughs>